Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving another nice problem from Croatia. We have x to the fourth plus y to the fourth plus z to the fourth plus one divided by x, y, z is equal to four. Now, this is not the original form of the problem. I just turned it into a fraction. We're going to multiply both sides by x, y, z and turn this into a polynomial equation. A long time ago, I've done a similar problem. If I can find the link, I'll share with you somewhat similar with the fourth powers. And this, these problems kind of have a very interesting idea. That's why I wanted to do this problem with uh, you guys. Okay. So first of all, let's multiply. X, Y, Z need to be different from zero. Obviously, if X, Y, Z uh, are, any of them are zero, you'll notice that uh, they're not going to satisfy the equation. So, that's not a problem. Multiply both sides by x, y, z, and you get the following. x to the fourth plus y to the fourth plus z to the fourth plus 1 equals 4x, y, z. Great. Now, what can we do with this expression, right? When you see a problem like this, you should be thinking, I need to complete the square. Because when you complete the square, you get a single equation, but that actually turns into multiple equations. So let me explain what I mean. This equation has three variables, but there's only one equation. And we're not being told to solve for integers, so this is not a diophantic equation in that sense. It's just polynomial equation, and we're looking for real solutions. So we do need a special scenario. Make sense? I hope it does. When we do it, you'll get a better idea. So let's go ahead and manipulate this a little bit to get what we want. First of all, I'm going to go ahead and put this, everything on the same side. So let's go ahead and do it. x to the fourth plus y to the fourth plus z to the fourth plus 1 minus 4x y z equals 0. That's the first rule. Put everything on the same side. And then the second step is try to get perfect squares out of this. But of course, you're going to need to manipulate this a little bit, add, subtract, whatever, to get something nicer. So my, the goal is the following. By doing all of these things, we're hoping to get something like this. a squared plus b squared plus, I don't know how many expressions we're going to have in this, but let's just say a squared plus b squared plus c squared plus d squared equals 0. And if a, b, c, d are real numbers, this automatically implies a0, b0, c0, and d0. You see, from a single equation, we're able to solve for four variables, or sometimes three, sometimes two, depending on the problem. Okay, so that's the whole idea. Let's see how we can turn this into a sum of squares. That's what we're trying to do, okay? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and, first of all, put the one with the x to the fourth, like this and put the y to the fourth with z to the fourth. Put those two together. And then subtract 4x, y, z equals zero. So here's my goal. I would like to put these two together and put these two together and then kind of come up with some type of perfect square from there. But how can I do that, right? Now think about it. I have x to the fourth and one. So I kind of have like a squared and b squared. I need 2ab. Remember, a squared plus b squared plus 2ab is a plus b squared. And if you turn this into a minus sign, this turns into a minus sign, so we can kind of write 2 in 1. Make sense? That's my goal. To What is 2ab then? I do need to add 2x squared. But you may not necessarily know what to do. It's either minus or plus, so you kind of have to try. But uh, to save you all that trouble, I'm going to show you what that looks like. So in this case, it's going to be a minus 2x squared. So now this is a complete square. And for the y to the fourth, it's going to be minus sign again. And let me tell you, the reason for this is probably because we want to add the remaining terms. So we want to make them positive so that we can use these along with this one. Make sense? And that's probably going to be the term in the middle, the 2ab, because that doesn't look like a perfect square, does it? Okay, great. So this is what I got so far. But notice that what I did was actually, and I probably need to do this again because it's not going to fit. So let's do it again. So I have x to the fourth, 
and then I subtract 2x squared and then add the 1. This becomes a perfect square. And then I take the y to the fourth and then subtract 2y squared, z squared, and add the z to the fourth. Now, I just subtracted two things, so I need to add them. And what are they? 2x squared and 2y squared, z squared. And just write the 4xyz and you should be good to go. Now, here's the thing. We got three expressions. They should all be perfect squares. And the first two are already perfect squares. That's what we wanted. So now let's go ahead and write this as x squared minus 1 squared and write this as y squared minus z squared squared. What about the third one? Well, the third one needs a little bit of work. If you take out a 2, you're going to get x squared minus 2xyz plus y squared z squared. Notice that I had to take out a 2 because it doesn't become a perfect square otherwise, but that's perfectly fine. You can have a positive coefficient in front of a perfect square. And then inside the parentheses, I have x minus yz squared. See how it kind of comes together? You kind of need to work with what you have and xyz. The presence of xyz tells me that I'm either going to have something like x minus plus yz or xy plus minus z. Make sense? So that I can get xyz from 2ab. Okay, I hope this makes sense. And now we got what we wanted. And of course, I should probably add when I said a squared plus b squared plus c squared equals 0. These could also come with positive coefficients. Okay, great. Now, from this equation, we get three different equations. What are they? Let's take a look. Now, and why are we getting three equations from here? That's a good question. Now, uh, if one of these is not 0, then it has to be positive because it's perfect square. And if one of these is a perfect square, and if one of these is positive, another one must be negative because their sum is 0, but uh, no square can be negative. Make sense? That's why they all have to be 0. So from here we get x squared minus 1 equals 0, which means x equals plus minus 1. And then y squared minus z squared equals 0, which means y equals plus minus z. And the third one tells us x minus yz equals 0, which means x equals yz. The third one is it's just that specific equation. There's no plus minus. So we kind of have to work with all three. Make sense? Now, how does this work? Let's test some of these values. For example, does x equals 1 work? If x is equal to 1, then, and let's say y is equal to z, right? If y and z are equal, I can just say x equals y squared. And since they're both the same and x is 1, y squared equals 1. From here, y is either 1 or negative 1. But since y and z are equal, these are also going to be the z values. This kind of gives us 1, comma, 1, comma, 1, or 1, comma, negative 1, comma, negative 1. Does that make sense? Okay, great. So another option could be something like this. Uh, you know, we could have x equals negative 1, right? And let's say y is equal to z. And then in this case, if you plug it in, x equals yz, so yz is going to be negative 1. But y and z are equal, so this implies y squared is negative 1. From here, you don't get real solutions. We're looking for real solutions. Oops, did I forget to say that? But if you're looking for complex solutions, you can also find them. i and negative i, so on and so forth. But let's focus on real solutions for now. This doesn't give us anything real. And another option that we should be looking at is when x is equal to 1, y could be negative z. And you'll probably notice that in this case we get complex solutions. But if x is negative 1 and y is equal to negative z, then hopefully we're going to get something from here. Let me go ahead and summarize all the solutions and we'll finish up with that. So we get 1, 1, 1 as a solution. 1, negative 1, negative 1. And then we get negative 1, 1 and negative 1. And finally, we get negative 1, negative 1, and 1. So there are four ordered triples that are solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.